In Humans, episode 6, Thoughts, this episode is called The Gentleman's Name is Gorgon. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. The show is rated TVPG, and so will this video be. It's finally almost over. Let's dive right in. So yeah, um, Max has a nightmare, which, you know... Decently enough, like the the visuals of it and the the editing and the sort of intensity, the growing tension. Yeah, it was actually one of the better sequences of the of the show so far. It is ironic that Max's nightmare is you know of the the royal family taking him out, ending the show because in my nightmares the show never ends. And let's see. I am not afraid of you. You should be. Can can y'all just chill for like two seconds? Like, I love how the Inhuman Royals like they keep going. In you know being like. Talking about how good they are, how much they deserve to, to rule, you know, all the Inhumans. And then on the other hand, like, threatening every human that they get near, including ones that are helping them. And then we learn that all that teleporting around the island wore out Lockjaw. Can you... Again, such an easy fix from a writing perspective. Just to have it be that healing Lockjaw took longer and then not have them teleport. Like, I get that we're dealing with a teenager here. But, like, from the very start, constantly talking about, you know, I have to find the rest of my family... And then, you know, and, and, you know, without Lockjaw, I'll never be able to find them. And then when Lockjaw can teleport, where, you know, where's the, the dog out? And, and says afterwards, uh, you know, she's right. I knew, you know, I, I forget if she literally said the words, I knew this was going to happen. But when, certainly when it happens, she recognizes that that's the case. So, you know, meaning this is not the, like, if my teleporting dog one day just stopped teleporting, I wouldn't immediately jump to the conclusion, oh, we must have worn it out. Like, it also got hit by a car recently. Like, the fact that, you know, the, the teleportation, moving on. And, let's see... Right, and yeah, so they, she and uh, Dave talk about, you know, how can she, what can she do to, to you know, find, to, to be reunited with her family. And I love that in the span of maybe about ten seconds, she goes from, why would I use my powers to, I will... Crap, thunder, and lightning, like the almighty Zeus. You know, just like, you know, they're, they're even like, um, maybe maybe Dave should not be really, really close to her as she's, you know, wielding lightning bolts. And let's see. Gorgon, I love you, but you're not helping. So Medusha does have positive feelings for at least some people. She loves Gorgon, who doesn't help, but really resents Louise, who does help. Like, yeah, I... How else to describe this but bigotry? This is, this is how bigots think, you know, that they consider worse the people who either do nothing wrong or help, whilst considering better the people 
who aren't really doing the right thing, even though, like, you know, he's got superpowers, like, hypothetically, he should be able to, to, yeah. Um, and then we find out that Louise was tinkering with the calm link, which, again, like, she knows that Auron and the others are specifically trying to kill... Maybe she really... Maybe this is her revenge on Medusha. Like, she's like, oh, you, you want to abuse me this much? Sure, fine. Two can, you know, I'll, I'll attract the attention of the, the, you know, yeah, the people who are out to get you. It is kind of adorable that, you know, like Medusha's trying to, I believe it's her, someone is trying to reassure Karnak, and it's like, even at half strength, you are the best fighter Adela has. And Gorgon's like, I guess second best, you know, just like, poor thing, he, he, needs, he needs to be reassured. And let's see. That brings us to the um, right. Yeah, we see that Max. You know, he he has now at this point several times said, "The people are happy. They all love me," which you know really does speak to this. Like he keeps thinking that as long as he is is in a good place that means that other people are happy as well you know so yeah that is a decent trait for a villain and let's see yeah we get a flashback to the the training sequence not a terrible scene and, yeah, Dr. Declan tells Aran, you know, based on, you know, he, he looked and, yeah, she's not going to be able to regenerate forever. I wish they had let that sit, because that is legitimately a very compelling sci-fi concept. Someone who believes they'll be able to keep coming back from these things, having to face not being able to. And <laughs> it is legitimate. I I will admit I kind of chuckled when you know they're they're yeah. Louise asks you know who who are who were you hiding from on the moon? And you know I, I guess like Black Bolt like points directly at her or something, and she's like me. Is precious, and she's a scientist too. She's like, you know, you you'd think she'd like be like, oh, you mean us humans, not me personally. <laughs> so in this vision, were we dancing? No. Then how do you know we were happy? I mean. I do think that the world would probably be a, a much cheerier place if that was how, you know, in, in place of like, you know, as it is where we like smile, but yeah, if, if every time someone was happy, they would just dance. Let's see. And yeah, I honestly, when, you know, when Gorgon said, I have an idea that, yeah, his his plan was actually quite clever, and this thing of you know, I do not see the flaw, and then he's like, well, neither will they, and I think it's Auron who says to to Mortis, keep an eye on you know Declan, I I. You realize you just. Between the two characters, you just went, ay, ay, ay. You know, I could be watching Power Rangers right now instead instead of this show. You Please don't give me ideas, show. 
and and yeah, uh, Karnak talks to to Mortis, and he's like, you know, you are literally the face of death. And and yeah, honestly, this thing of you know, yeah, he's been, you know, as soon as he came out of the the Terragenesis, which was supposed to help, that was supposed to be a good thing. Yeah, he comes out, everyone's afraid of him, they lock him up. Does make a lot of sense why he is so bitter and snarky. I'm still not a fan of that character trait. And then also, like, you know, Karnak says, you know, oh, I, I, I felt bad for you, I, you know, and then afterwards he tells Gorgon, oh, I was terrified of him. These are the heroes? Because, like, Mortis didn't do anything not back then he has recently but at the time he'd done nothing wrong and they're like he is so scary you mean the way that humans view inhumans is that what you're getting at because i feel like the show the, the writers don't realize that that's kind of where you're that's where this path leads. You're already doing a story about bigotry and how it affects people, and now you're having the good guy. There's two episodes left. This is not a huge amount of time left for, like, the royal family members to, to all have epiphanies about how terrible they've been. Like, I have a really bad feeling that the show is going to end just by reasserting the status quo and being like, well... What are you going to do? They're the ones in charge, you know. Bow your head, lick the boot, and hope that you don't end up in the mines because the eugenics people think that you're, you're not worthy. And, and yeah, the, you know, it was fairly effective stalling. And... Yeah, we have another fight scene. It's just it's the it's the editing, it's the way that none of the none of the blows feel like there's that much weight behind them, which like at the end of the day, a lot of these scenes, you know, they're not literally hitting each other. They're always stopping just short of that. But you have to make an effort to make sure that it looks like they are hitting each other. Otherwise, yeah, we're just watching two people, like, carry out choreography that they rehearsed, you know? And the score, oh my, like, that, yeah, um, to, you know, the, the, this, this terrible techno thing, to paraphrase, paraphrase Jimmy Carr, I want that playing at my funeral, that way I'll be glad I'm dead. And... I will say this thing of so so Audrey went to the police just in case you know we're, we're supposed to think yeah right we're obviously you know this this teenager who can blow up stuff with her mind and like literally it's a phone like <clears throat> she blew up the phone just like that you know I from her point of view obviously she didn't know that that wasn't a weapon but like Audrey is not completely wrong here I will say the thing of you know the, the cops like she said there's an alien dog in there. I want to see an alien dog. <laughs> I mean, who amongst us would not have that exact reaction? Like, literally, because, cause like, at the end of the day, this cop is like, I mean, this isn't really probable cause. I don't have, I'm not hearing screams from in there. There's no exigent circumstances. This is not any kind of emergency situation. But if there is an alien dog in there... <laughs> I, I, I would never forgive myself for not at least taking a peek. 
and yeah, they you know they managed to teleport out of there, which I love. Audrey has literally already she's seen it with her own two eyes. She wasn't looking entirely in the right direction, but she's hypothetically seen with her own eyes that this doll can teleport, and she, it doesn't occur to her that maybe she should make sure the dog is in there before she tells the cop. Like, just tell the cop something else. You know, tell them there's a kidnap victim in there or something that's going to have him kicking down the door. But, like, no, she... T I mean, officer, when I left this morning, there was ice cream in there. Now, I haven't checked since. It's been six hours. It's a very hot day. But I am confident that it is still going to be exactly where I left. Like, and she, she actually is like, no, what? How did this... How did the teleporting dog teleport away? This doesn't make any sense. This violates everything I've seen in this show up to this point. Please. Oh my. There's only two episodes left. There's just just two more episodes. And then we're gonna then then we're done. And I do appreciate, you know, Louise doing a good job covering, you know, she's like, there's no alien dog in here. Audrey locked me in here. Because Dave broke up with her, and then he started seeing me. You know, that is legitimately... Because that is what it looks like, you know. Let's see. And, and it's one of those things, like, why would Louise lie about that? You know, that's a very, very strange thing to say. And this is after the cop has seemingly, from his point of view from a certain point of view, been lied to about there being an alien dog, which, like, I've, based on his reaction, seemed to be very high up on the list of, of like, you know, the, the bucket list. And, yeah, we see that, you know, or, yeah, the various royals realize that Gorgon is dead. And the music really implies that this is sad. He's been largely a comic relief character. Like, I'm amazed he he lasted this long. This is the guy that went swimming even though, you know, hooves. Like, just, yeah. Um, and then we get a surprisingly long post credit scene. Like, the longest post credit scene I think I've ever seen. And, yeah, you know, Max is seemingly able to, to stop the, you know, these, these resistance members, which literally, like, unless there's something really significant about them in the last two episodes, their inclusion was pointless. Like, their, their entire subplot was just nothing but padding. When, when it was actually, like, I, I... I thought it was going to be interesting. I thought it was going to be an interesting element of the show. And then there's just... Yeah. And we have the most PG slit throat I've ever seen. Like, if you're going to... do Like... I would prefer the Dark Knight Rises bullets that, as is pointed out in the abridged script of that movie... Or, hold on come to think of it, I don't think it's that movie, but an abridged script. The, the, you know, those bullets just make ev everyone really sleepy. Like, why would you have, like, I can imagine it was maybe written that way before they found out that it was going to be that, that it was going to be TV PG, but, like, just change it. Like, we don't see anything anyway, you know, if you if you didn't have a prop for like a a sleepy bullet gun, have him like stab him in in the gut and then he just falls over or something. Well, that, that would also pro that 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 would also mean a lot of blood. But at least like it just yeah. Um, I'm not saying the show had to be super violent. And yeah, Max, you know, starts finger painting with the the blood on Brunacha, who, you know, eventually gives in and says, "My king." And 
again, like, I feel like every time those words are uttered about Max, it's supposed to, like, send a chill down the audience's spine, but there's no evidence so far in this show. I'm sure there is in the comics that Black Bolt is any kind of a leader. Like, that's just, yeah, this is such a such a confused show full of baffling decisions.